YouTube, Joe Edelman here again. Uh, I previously made a video breaking down Johnny Greenwood's use of the delay pedal, and people seem to respond pretty well to that, so there'll definitely be more videos like that to come in the future. Uh, today I wanted to try something similar, breaking down the use of synthesizers in Radiohead's music, in particular the use of the polyphonic synthesizer. One of the many things that I love about this band, and I'm sure others feel the same way, is their ability to combine rock and electronic instrumentation and modes of composition in a way that feels really natural and not forced. Um, this, of course, really kicked off with their monolithic release, Kid A, and has been a feature of their sound ever since, up to and including the most recent studio release, A Moonshape Pool. Over this time period, Radiohead have used virtually every electronic-influenced tool and method under the sun, from tape loops to chopped samples to modular sequencers and synthesizers um, to vocoders. But what I really want to focus on today is their use of polyphonic synthesizers. And to do that, I'll use a lot of the same sound and song examples um, that I discussed in my delay video, including the songs Staircase, Identikit, Lotus Flower, Super Collider, and Ill Wind. As always, I hope to combine both a more technical and philosophical discussion of these songs and sounds so that both veteran synth tweakers and casual listeners will have something to learn. If you're just getting into synthesizers like I was when I began listening to Radiohead and other electronic music, hopefully this video will help expound upon some basic synthesizer concepts like modulation, envelopes, and subtractive synthesis. As always, there are also great resources on the web um, for these topics. For example, thekingofgear.com has a great discussion of the various synthesizers that Radiohead have used during their career and the way that they've achieved their sounds. And, you know, I know, for instance, Reverb.com recently put out a piece about the synth sounds of Radiohead, an article that's fairly accurate and interesting, um, which is another great place to start. Um, but what follows will be my own recreation of these sounds by ear and from scratch. So today I'm using my absolutely incredible Dave Smith Instruments Prophet Rev 2 to help me recreate these sounds. Dave Smith is a true pioneer of the synthesizer world. He was one of the co-inventors of the MIDI protocol, and his original Prophet 5 was a cornerstone of early electronic music. I know for a fact that several of those vintage units made their way into Tom and Nigel's hands, and therefore onto some Radiohead tracks as well. Nowadays, Tom uses the Dave Smith Instruments Prophet 08, uh, in Radiohead's live performances, and he has done so since the King of Limbs live era. Um, what the Prophet Rev 2 is, is essentially just an updated version of the Prophet 08 with a few extra features, but pretty much the same guts uh, at the end of the day. So it features two digitally controlled analog oscillators running through the classic sounding Curtis low pass filter chip. While every synthesizer has its own character and mojo, in large part due to different filter sounds, you should be able to recreate the sounds that follow on just about any good digital or analog polyphonic synthesizer, whether or not that's a hardware synthesizer or a soft synth or VST plug-in for your digital audio workstation. I know for a fact that Arturia makes a really good recreation of the vintage profit in a plug-in form. Um, so what I'll do is I'll do my best for each sound to kind of walk through the key settings and parameters and kind of build it, build the sound up from scratch. And then in the description, I'll give a full list of all the parameters that I used, uh, expressed in sort of the MIDI-based 0 to 127, for the most part, values of the profit. And then you can take those and adapt those to your own setup. Here's my shortened version of a synthesizer 101 so that those less familiar can follow along with what I'm saying. There are two big categories of synthesizer, monophonic, in which only one note can be played at a time, and polyphonic, in which multiple notes, up to a certain limit, 16 in the case of the Prophet Rev 2, can be played simultaneously, similar to how you might play a piano. A synthesizer at its core consists of one or more oscillators which generate a sound wave. This sound wave can be one of several basic shapes, each of which has its own timbre and harmonic complexities. These include saw waves, triangle waves, and pulse waves. In subtractive synthesis, the sound is then passed through a filter, which, as the name suggests, filters out or subtracts certain frequencies from the sound to change its character. Typically, these are low-pass filters, which pass over the low frequencies below a given cutoff frequency and attenuate the frequencies above the cutoff, typically the higher harmonic sounds of complex wave shapes. The sound then incorporates two different envelopes, which are time functions based on when you press and release a key. They are the amplifier envelope, which determines how the volume of the sound changes over time, and the filter envelope, which determines how the cutoff frequency for the filter moves over time. An envelope consists of four values which describe this movement. The attack, which is how gradually a sound fades in or a filter sweeps up and down. Decay, which is how gradually it will fade back down to its steady state key held down value. Sustain, which is the level it stays at while the key is held. 
and release, which is the time that it takes to fade away or return to its base value after a key is released. With these four controls, you can replicate anything from quick staccato plucks to violin-like swells to lush, sustained pads, and you can create interesting sweeps in the filter. Beyond the envelopes, there are other ways to modulate or vary the sound you've created. The primary amongst these are low-frequency oscillators, which are oscillators that move slower than the speed of audible pitch, and that can be assigned to manipulate the pitch, volume, or shape of your main sound as it plays. LFOs are the basis of a lot of effects that are also associated with guitars, such as tremolo, vibrato, and flanging. So let's dissect the staircase sound. The sound's rooted in a pair of sawtooth oscillators plus a touch of the sub oscillator. Sawtooths are really popular for subtractive synthesis since they contain a rich, fuzzy, hairy, high harmonic content which gives the filter a lot to work with. I've detuned one of the oscillators slightly which creates that natural beating or chorusing type modulation in the sound. I'm going to lean even more heavily into this modulation aesthetic to reproduce a flanger type sound by assigning the first low frequency oscillator to modulate the pulse width of one of the saw waves, the same way that a tape flanger would create a rhythmic thinning by the phase cancellation of having two waves offset each other. I'll double down on this by using the modulation matrix to assign the same LFO to the pulse width of the second saw wave as well. Then, and this is a big one for Radiohead and Tom York's Synthesthetic, I'll set another LFO to modulate the pitch of both oscillators to create that wobbly, seasick vibrato sound that gives the sound its Blade Runner-esque retro character. So now that we have our basic tone, let's work on the filter and the envelopes. I rolled the filter down to where I want the starting point of the envelope to be, but the sound is going to bloom with the attack of the envelope and become more open sounding and bright. And then I'll set the parameters of the filter envelope, which is a medium attack, long decay, long sustain, and medium release. And I'm going to add the influence of the filter into the sound with the envelope amount control. Next, I'm adjusting the amplifier envelope in a similar fashion to the filter envelope so that the two work more or less in tandem over time to achieve a similar effect on the sound. As a finishing touch, I'm using the synthesizer's onboard effects section to add a tiny splash of delay to the sound to add some depth and ambience. And there we have it, the lush, slowly evolving warble of Staircase. So for Identikit, as fans have discussed, there was a somewhat controversial change in the synth tone for the song between the original live performances of 2012 and the 2016 studio release. I'll show you how I made both versions of the sound and why I think people responded less favorably to the later version. The 2012 version begins with a pulse wave combined with a sawtooth wave and a bit of sub oscillator, with pulse width shaping on each until the two sounds blend into one full bodied one. As with Staircase, we're doing some detuning on the waves to add a slight chorusing effect. Again, I'm going to put an LFO on the shape of one of the waves to give some slight flanging and movement to the sound.
Again, I'm going to also repeat the Radiohead synth move of putting vibrato on the sound by assigning the next LFO to modulate the pitch, albeit at a slightly faster frequency and greater depth than we did in Staircase. One other thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to assign the mod wheel to control the cutoff frequency of the filter, just so that I have some control later over the overall brightness of the sound with the mod wheel. Next, I'm going to move the filter and the envelopes. I'm going to again bring my filter starting point down until the sound is dampened, but still distinguishable. And I'm using the envelope amount control to figure out how much influence the filter envelope will have over the sound. I'll set the filter envelope with a very fast attack, full sustain, and long release. And then I'll change the amplifier pan spread so that the sound has even more width. And I'll change the envelope settings for the amplifier similar to the filter. The sound is really defined by those rich, fuzzy saw harmonics and the long release times which let the sound decay slowly after each quick chord change. As a final bonus step, I'm going to set the bass pitch of each oscillator up to C3 from C2, which is the default value, so that I can play the part starting lower on the keyboard. Voila. By comparison, here's how I created the 2016 recorded tone, which is a modified and somewhat simplified version. I've substituted a triangle wave for the pulse wave in the first oscillator, which is a bit smoother and has a glassier quality to it. I also have the filter essentially disengaged by setting the cutoff frequency to max and without any envelope controls. I'm adding a slight bit of detuning as I did before and mixing the waves together. So there's that chorus sound again. A little bit more sub-oscillator. And then lastly, just the amplitude envelope. Again, quick attack, long release. Notably, there's just less modulation and movement due to the lack of LFOs and envelopes. This is clearly just a more basic tone, not a bad one by any means, but in comparison to the richness and the movement of the live tone, I can see how folks were thrown off. So moving on to Lotus Flower, I'm specifically referring to the pad sound from the song's chorus as Johnny plays the main driving bass riff of the song from the verse on a mini Moog, which is perhaps the greatest mono synthesizer of all time. The sound has the blooming, slower envelope attack feature similar to Staircase, but in contrast to it, an identikit lacks a longer release time, which fits with how it's being played in the song, a what you hold down is what you get, more immediate sound more than a spacey, infinite type sound of the others. I've started with a combination of pulse and sawtooth waves plus some sub oscillator, as before, and with a touch of detuning, but less than for the other sounds. I'm going to once again use an LFO to modulate pitch, but I'm actually going to independently assign two LFOs, one to each oscillator, at very slightly different speeds and depths to add a bit more complexity and less of that obvious kind of seasick warble.
And so here I have the filter set to its 8-pole mode, which is essentially just a higher intensity of frequency roll-off and more accentuated sound of its movement. And I've set the cutoff for the start of my envelope even lower because I really want to hear that sweep, that pronounced sweep at the beginning of the sound. And then I'm putting in, afterwards, a medium attack on the filter envelope. So setting the attack. On the amplifier, I'm adding a bit of pan spread to make it wider, similar to an identikit. And then for the amplifier attack, sort of a short medium attack sound, and a much faster release than for the other sounds so that letting go of the key stops the sound quickly. Finally, I'm adding a splash of actual chorus as opposed to just detuning to the sound with the synthesizer's onboard effects. And there we have a very cool, low mid-range swelling sound that provides a solid harmonic foundation for Tom's ethereal vocal. As many people on the internet have pointed out, there's a striking similarity between the synth sounds on King of Limbs B-Side Super Collider and the Moonshape Pool B-Side Ill Wind. So I've made a sound here that I feel like can be used, and in fact I did use, for covering either. It starts with a combination of sawtooth and triangle waves, similar to the Identikit 2016 patch, with again a bit of wave shaping on each. Surprise, surprise, I'll detune one of the oscillators slightly for modulation, and I'll add in some sub-oscillator. And once again, I'll do the Tom York thing and add a pitch vibrato by way of a moderately fast and deep LFO. The filter I have set again to its stronger 8-pole mode with a fairly high cutoff to which I'm going to add some decay and release via the filter envelope. I've also added a little bit of resonance here, which is essentially emphasis around the filter's cutoff frequency. You can hear resonance in synth sounds a lot of times when the sweep is really pronounced. You can hear an almost singing or whistling high overtone on top of the filter sweep. And in this case, you can also use it to slightly brighten up the sound. On the amplifier, I'm going to put a touch of attack to smooth the sound and a medium short release time. For modulation, I'm going to assign the mod wheel to both the filter cutoff so that I can control the brightness of the sound in real time, as well as to the amplifier release time so that when I open up the filter, the sound also sustains longer to really pronounce the sweep. Finally, I've used the onboard effects to add a single repeat dotted eighth delay to the sound for the purpose of playing Super Collider, 
Live, Tom achieves this with a boss delay pedal mounted on his synth, but with any delay set this way, it'll help you play the song the way he does, tapping the chord twice with a third syncopated bounce back repeat. For Ill Wind, you simply turn off the delay and play with the filter cutoff. That's going to do it for me today. Uh, I really enjoyed dissecting these sounds that I love so much, um, and I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and leave suggestions for future videos like this in the comments. See you soon.